Hello and welcome to this AQA GCSE Elizabethan England video tutorial. This is the second part on the Spanish Armada and the title for today's video tutorial is the key moments from the Spanish Armada launch. Why did the Spanish Armada fail? You'll notice what appear at this moment in time a random selection of images and I hope at least by the end of today's video you'll see how all of these fit into the story of the failed Spanish attempt to invade England. So our objectives for the end of this video tutorial will be that all of you are able to describe the key moments in the Spanish Armada, we'll be able to explain why the Armada failed, and we'll also be able to decide which was the key factor leading to the failure of the Spanish Armada. It may also be that you might consider a turning point, the moment which changed the course of the battle. So what we're going to do is as follows. Each slide is going to represent a postcard, a moment of an important event or episode in the Spanish Armada. After each card, I'm going to ask you how the information could explain the failure of the Spanish Armada. And I'd like you to complete the following table. Think about the following factors. How did the weather or perhaps bad luck, aka misfortune, cause the failure of the Spanish Armada? How might it have been poor Spanish tactics and leadership? How might it have been superior English tactics or leadership? Or technology and weaponry from the postcode you're going to look at. Make sure you make your event section bigger than the other areas. You must include key information about what is happening each time. I'll show you what we mean as the video progresses. The first event slash postcode we're going to look at is the singeing of the King of Spain's beard, a name which is given to a key event which happened before the launch of the Spanish Armada. This involved Cadiz, which was a Spanish port. In April and May 1587, the English privateer Sir Francis Drake raided the naval force that was assembled there, delaying the build up and launch of the Spanish Armada. The raid, which was a preemptive strike which Drake requested, led to the loss of 24 ships. Cadiz was also a main supply base, and through Drake's attempts, he destroyed 32 supply ships, set alight to 500 tonnes of bread, 40 tonnes of wheat, and destroyed a year's supply of iron hoops and wood staves, which would be used to make barrels. These barrels would be vital in the transportation of fresh water and gunpowder on board the boats on the Armada. After doing this, Drake departed to the islands of Azores, which is just off of Portugal, and the Admiral at the time, Santa Cruz, decided to chase this menacing presence which severely battled the Spanish royal fleet and brought further preparation time for England. Drake even went on to publicly boast that he had singed the King of Spain's beard. The reality was that his actions only delayed the Spanish invasion. He wrote in private to Elizabeth, urging her to prepare in England strongly and mostly by sea. Stop him now and stop him forever. Pause the video and see what you can add to your table of information about the singeing of the King of Spain's beard and what, uh, what factor this, this information best belongs to in causing the Spanish failure. So here's one I prepared earlier. You'll notice I've given a summary of the event, the singeing of the King's beard, and I've decided that that information suggests that the Spanish Armada failed due to superior English tactics and leadership. That Sir Francis Drake's preemptive strike delayed the Spanish Armada's launch, buying valuable time for England to prepare for the invasion. I've also suggested the importance of the iron hoops and staves to make barrels. The absence of that would have meant that uh, the Spanish were unable to store gunpowder uh, and fresh water, which would have been valuable for the boats on their journey across the English Channel. Now, you may have other ideas on this, and that is perfectly acceptable, but make sure you note down your opinion on this before we move on to event number two. Event number two was the eventual launch of the Spanish Armada. Now this took place on the 21st of July 1588. By the time the Spanish Armada had been launched there had been many changes to the fleet. Now on, 16th, on the 16th of November 1587 violent storms in Lisbon damaged 39 Spanish ships before the Armada had even set off. Equally during this time, Santa Cruz had passed away. It was said that his death occurred on the 9th of February 1588 at Lisbon and was said to have been hastened by the unjustified attacks on his character by King Philip. He was replaced by the Duke of Medina Sidonia. 
And I think it's fair to say he was a very different character to Santa Cruz. Philip continued to push for the Armada to launch. Many of the delays had led to reduced supplies and provisions. Daily rationing for the men of food supplies was uh, had to be brought in. Another being that some of the gunpowder and stores produced in the spring were declared unfit for use by the time the Armada was put to sea. So on the 21st of July, 1588, Medina Sidonia with a depleted Armada of 127 ships set sail on Philip of Spain's angry orders after a powerful storm two days earlier had further damaged 14 of the fleet. Pause the video, make sure you've got some information about the launch of the Spanish Armada and think about why this might have led to their eventual failure. I'll give you one more example of how I interpreted this event. So again, you'll notice I've put some key information in the event column. But what we can see is, is that th the information provided gives us multiple interpretations as to why the Armada failed. The weather and misfortune clearly played a, an effect. Strong storms reduced the fleet on several occasions, delaying its launch. And the untimely death of Santa Cruz led to a very less experienced replacement in the form of Medina Sidonia. Have a look at the sport, poor Spanish tactics. Philip forced the launch of the Armada to go ahead as part of his grand strategy, despite many setbacks and a much depleted Armada to be launched. Think again also about technology and weaponry. Many of the gunpowder was declared unfit for use by the time the Armada was put to sea. Hopefully you've got similar answers in your table. Event number three is the sighting. On the 29th of July, 1588, at about 4 p.m., the Armada was spotted entering the English Channel from the coastline. It was spotted at Lizard Point in Cornwall. Please don't ask me why it's called that. I have no idea. A chain of beacons had been constructed along the south coast on high ground to alert London of a coming invasion. Some commanders urged Medina Sidonia to attack the English fleet at Plymouth, but he insisted on pressing for the strait at Dover where he hoped to wait for news of the Duke of Parma's land army arriving. Think back to our plan of the two, uh, the two splintered formats of the army meeting up. Unbeknown to him, the English had sailed out of Plymouth against prevailing winds and sailed around the Armada to take up a position which would give it a strategic advantage with the wind. Pause the video, make sure you've got details about the sighting and think about what might have led to the Spanish Armada's failure. This time, I have complete confidence that you will be able to fill in the table for yourself. See what you can do. Event number four was the Battle of Plymouth. Now this took place on the 31st of July, 1588. And at 9 a.m., the English opened fire on the Spanish Crescent Formation with San Juan de Portugal receiving over 300 rounds of English ballistics. The Crescent Formation was the formation that the Spanish boats took in the form of a crescent shape, tightly packed together to add protection against the English boats. At about 5 p.m., the San Salvador was disabled by an explosion and captured by the English. The Spanish in their crescent formation were unable to respond. The English kept well away from the grappling hooks the Spanish would have wanted to use, given their skills at close quarter fighting. The typical Spanish tactic was to launch grappling hooks, lock onto the side of a boat, take over the boat because it was a valuable commodity. Now the battle led to very little casualties, but Drake took his men back out at nightfall to loot the abandoned ships. This was a costly exercise. Travelling with no light to remain undetected meant the English ships became scattered and had to regroup. Was the looting worth it? Well, the abandoned ships carried much gunpowder and gold, but gave a day's grace to the Spanish Armada. Importantly, after the Battle of Plymouth, the Armada continued to pass towards Calais in France. Pause the video and make sure you've completed your table. Event number five, this ship is on fire. Medina Sidonia's Armada had sailed close to Calais to find out the land army hosted by the Duke of Parma would not be able to join him for at least another week. Anxious about this, he gave the order to anchor 35 kilometres from Dunkirk. As the sun went down, the Spanish were terrified to see eight fire ships being towed towards them. And believing that they were packed with explosives, Medina Sidonia ordered his fleet to disperse and regroup. 
As panic spread through the Armada, some captains eventually cut their anchors, which would have a dreadful effect the next day. Crucially, the Spanish ships were scattered, breaking its tight crescent formation. This innovative tactic would prove crucial at the Battle of Gravelines on the next event card. Make sure you pause the video and have taken notes on what has happened here and why the Armada failed. Event number six, the Battle of Gravelines. Now this takes place on the 8th of August, 1588. At dawn, the English with the winds and currents in their favor launched a ferocious and relentless attack on the Armada just off the coast of Flanders. The battle lasted for nine hours with fighting done at close quarters, though just out of reach of Spanish grappling hooks. The wisdom of Lord Howard, the admirals uh, of the English fleet's decision to save his ammunition now became clear as the firepower of the Armada was only three quarters of that of the English. Only one ship was sunk in the battle, but others were captured or ran aground. Of the 2,636 men who lost their lives in the Armada, approximately 1,000 of them died at Gravelines and a further 800 were inevitably wounded. At the Battle of Gravelines, the Spanish ship's heavy guns could not reload as fast as the English. Four-wheel drive gun carriages led to greater flexibility on the English side and accuracy of shots. And accuracy of shots. The use of culverins, long-range guns, which meant Spanish grappling hooks couldn't be used, also gave the English an advantage. The Battle of Gravelines saw the further destruction and scattering of the Spanish Armada and saw the Duke of Parma's land army nowhere nearer in sight. Pause the video and make sure you have some key information on your table about it. Two more events to go. One of the most famous moments that has been documented in film was the event that took place at Tilbury in Essex on the 8th of August. At this point, there were still considerable fears that the Duke of Parma might still attempt an invasion. And in a melodramatic fashion, Elizabeth visited her troops at Tilbury in Essex on horseback, clad in full armour. It is here she delivered one of her most iconic and rousing speeches. It went, I am resolved in the midst and heats of battle to live and die among you all. I know that I have the body of a weak and feeble woman, but I have the heart and stomach of a king of England too and think foul scorn that Parma or Spain or any other prince of Europe should dare to invade the borders of my realm. This speech was received by 4,000 of Elizabeth's troops who were encamped near the fort. Imagine if you were one of those 4,000 hearing this speech, the impact it would have on your morale and spirit to completely overrun the Spanish Armada. As Medina Sidonia rallied the remains of his armada, fierce winds forced the armada along the North English coast into the North Sea, scattering them further. It was decided that the galleons would have to sail north around Scotland, subjecting those that had survived the food shortages and hardship of the battle to an even worse ordeal. In fact, on the English medallions, the medals given to those brave soldiers that fought, the inscription said, God blew, and they, I think in reference to the Spanish ships, scattered. The final event, event number eight, involves the end of the Armada. Now the Armada had been chased as far as Scotland, anticipating sailing around Ireland to return to Spain. Equipped though with poor maps and ill knowledge of the Gulf streams in the North Atlantic, they turned back far too early into further devastating weather. Gales and strong westerly winds then drove many of their ships onto the rocks of the North and West coast of Ireland. Additionally, many of the sailors fell ill and many vessels were shipwrecked. Of Philip's mighty fleet, just 60 ships had made it back to Spain by the end of the year, and an estimated 20,000 Spaniards had been killed. For the Spanish, the Armada had been an epic military failure and a huge waste of human life and resource. Make sure you pause the video and finalize the end of the Armada. So what have we learned about the fate of the Spanish Armada? Well, the Armada was defeated due to multiple reasons. Spanish mistakes, the tactical skill of the English, and the role the weather certainly played. The Spanish defeat boosted English national pride and was a great propaganda victory for Elizabeth. But what did you decide was the key factor for the Spanish defeat? Can you give your own opinion based on the evidence? Thanks for watching, and I hope you found this video extremely useful. Take care.